What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Becoming Leader Than Greg Doucette. This is episode 16. Before we get started, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification button so when I post a video, you're the first to get it. Um, right now, I'm just warming up chest. I'm basically waiting for Greg to come over. So this video was shot about an hour before Lee Priest shared Greg's response video to Lee and what he said to some random guy in his DMs. This is also the same day that... Uh, Dave Plumbo requested that Greg goes on his show and has this iron debate about bulking because everybody kind of misunderstands Greg and saying that he believes that you should be contest prep ready all year long and that you shouldn't bulk when that's not the case at all. So Greg's kind of frustrated and also doesn't want to get into the debate about, you know, macros and calorie intake because he just knows the truth about that and doesn't want to get into that heated battle for nothing. All right, like a slight bit rattled. I did, I, um, I just did, it's my second set, 315, uh, I've got seven. And I press record on my phone, not on here. So uh, I'm hoping to get seven again. I, I took a good enough rest, about two minutes. So I'm gonna get after it again. You got three plates on here. This feels heavier than it's felt before. Um, I mean, obviously because I haven't been doing 315. Like when you lift the same bar, the same plates all the time and you start looking at some you know different plate different bars they seem so much different that's what this feels like in a good way so let's go let's get it so this is my uh, third true working set uh, with 315 it's been a long time since I've been able to lift 315 because I haven't had the weight in my house so now that I do um, I was really excited to be able to lift this because it's been a long time since I've actually lifted 315 so there's a weight I can use now that I can really focus on progressive overload and strengthening my chest, which is awesome. So I went from just doing this set here and then did somewhat of like, not a uh, back off set, but I added more weight and then added bands so that it could help me at the bottom, give me a little less stress on my joints. But then I can really just focus on that finishing um, squeeze and contraction at the top of the lift. So the bands really only help me from right about there, then here they just not help me at all. So my goal is to literally technique first and then just demolish my chest through good technique, good tempo, and you know, perfect range of motion. When I tell you my chest isn't strong, my chest is not strong. My chest has never been strong. And now that it's you know, been through injury, you know, my shoulders and whatnot, and being a sport where my chest doesn't need to be strong, I'm only lifting to get this thing bigger. Now, yes, strength is a bifactor of training for sure. You know, when it comes to what I'm doing, you know, it's, it's inevitable that I'll get stronger and stronger with progressive overload, you know, trying to get my chest bigger. But for someone my size, my chest isn't that strong. For me, that was good for me. And um, we're going up to 30 degree incline now. And I was on a 15 degree incline, so I don't do bench flat at all. Yes, it's a really good um, overall chest builder, but my chest lacks the most up here, my pec monitor. That's where I'm targeting. You know, flat bench is no point in me doing it. Not no point, but that's why I do it on the incline. A 15 degree incline to just kind of move up my chest a little bit. Just think about every time you do an incline, the further up your chest goes. Decline being just triceps and like, just basically doing dips. And then once you go up, full chest, you know, pec major, and then we're at like pec major and minor, then we're at like pec minor, um, you know, anterior delt, and then we're at pec minor, anterior delt, uh, mostly if you're looking at in the standpoint of doing like, a um, military press, barbell press, that bar being in front of you. The muscles involved in that primarily, pec minor um, and your anterior delt. So that's why I don't go fully fully flat. I say incline and then up incline. So um, funny thing is, is I'm stronger incline than I am flat. And that's definitely because of my past injuries. Um, gravity wise, when I'm in a incline position, weight pushes my shoulders down naturally plus me engaging any way to keep my shoulder blades down that helps but when i'm flat it tends to do this to me even with me pushing down as much as i can here my rotator group I just don't have the stamina in my right side to really hold that that position 
as long. So me being in, on incline benefits me. So that's why I do incline. That's probably why I'm stronger. That's my theory. Anyway, I got 315 on the bar, but I have a band. So if you notice the last time these bands do F all right here at the top, like at the top of the lift from here to here, I would say from last maybe third of the lift, it does nothing. It's helped me control, keeping a little less stress on my joints, but it'll give me the ability to really focus on contracting my chest and pushing through that with the aid of the bands. But then at the top, the bands aren't really doing anything at all. And then I have to really focus on that finish at the top, not pushing my shoulders, but locking in, engaging my chest now. So let's get this started. <laughs> So I'm on my last set of the resistance bands, um, normally like a back off set, and Greg pops in and he's kind of notifying me about Dave Plumbo, you know, asking him to do a, you know, iron debate or whatever on a show, talk about nutrition, and that's when kind of Greg gives me the lowdown. So this is the start of the whole conversation, and I'm just trying to convince him that he should probably do the interview, and then we kind of get into a little bit more about why you should not do the interview in the rest of the system. Educate people on something important. I'm just saying you can do both. The whole macros and calories is all stupid. It's not worth me wasting my time. Use this up on nuclear overload. It's even dumber. But I did videos to say to people it's dumb. Don't but, do it. But you, you okay, but you, what you am I supposed to do? Go on a video with Dave but you'll get the same and say, thing. look, Dave, Calories in, calories out but is the bottom the, line. But Everyone you the, knows that. But you, get the same, knows that. you get the same feedback, and I can guarantee you it's going to eventually end up with you doing another video that's going to get 100 some thousand views. And you got Lee Priest, who's his best buddy, too. I would be doing that video. i do that interview 100%. If I was you, for sure I would. I would go up and let the whole world know. Anytime they ask me, oh, you want my professionalism? I'll show you how smart I am. And I would do it every last. So I added in pin press to my chest day routine, one of my favorite exercises. It annihilates your chest. You get a massive pump from it. Basically what you want to do is um, lower the weight with control, then deactivate when you touch the pins quick and then reactivate it, explode up again. You get one heck of a pump, um, especially after the two exercises that I just did. So Greg's basically responding to a video that Dave Plumbo did on calories versus macros. And this is what Greg's response is. There's no way Dave doesn't agree with everything I say. There's Dave. no way. But, he's, but, but the way he says it makes some viewers who are idiots think he's against me. Do you think that Dave Palumbo actually thinks you don't need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight? He must know you need to diet. You can't just eat a certain macro ratio and lose weight. That's what people think. They literally think as long as you get a certain amount of grams of fiber, protein, carb, that you lose weight. It's like, that's because you're at a certain calorie intake. But he also says, well, if you're eating a certain amount of calories and then you take prednisone, you're going to get fat. And it's like, no, it's not from prednisone. It's because prednisone's making you eat more. But what, if he's say, what if he's saying that, but not saying, like, what if he's Donald Trumping this information and not saying... I'm going to put the video on so you can hear it. Oh, that's your... Like, Greg says it's calories in, calories out. And then all you have to do is say, Greg is an idiot. Because if he thinks that a carb is the same thing as protein, then he's an idiot. Because you can't build muscle without protein. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But in my explanation, I'm like, everyone eats enough protein unless you're an idiot and you actually avoid protein. Yeah. So you don't need to count your grams of protein because you automatically eat enough of it. It's so simple. Yeah, but yeah. So when Dave does that, I don't think he's actually doing the video and thinking about me as he's doing it. He was referring to your Weight Watcher yeah, your program. And I'm going to do a freaking video on Weight Watchers program. Oh man, Weight Watchers. Remember the 200 foods that you can have for free? 
They make potatoes zero. I was just points. Like, zero points. And I was like, potatoes. So you're saying I, I think it was beans or something. I was like, <laughs> so I can eat unlimited beans. Oh, that's great. I was like, all I have to do is say, this is what they do, and there's 200 foods I can eat for free, and just go through them and be like, are you serious? And that's no. that's Weight Watchers diet. It's, it's bad. It's bad. You know. It's so bad. You can only eat a little bit of pizza, but you can eat as many beans and potatoes as you want. Yeah. But let's see more of what he's saying. Like, you're on a calorie, a specific calorie diet, let's say 2,000 calories, and you're not losing or gaining weight, and then you add a drug like prednisone into the mix, all of a sudden you start getting fat. Why? Because you get hungry and you overeat, and it makes you store water. And you get bloated. It's not fat, it's bloated water. So what you do is you start sneaking food. You start eating extra calories. You don't actually count correctly. And you get a bloated. Like, why is it that when you take D-ball, you gain 10 pounds? Well, it's water. It's the same thing. Prednisone is a freaking corticosteroid. It adds like blah, blah. <laughs> Imagine, you're on an exact diet and you add in prednisone and magically you get fat. No, Dave, you, add, you, you magically add water. Like, yes. And it makes you hungrier. It's very bad on your hunger. You, it sucks. Can you see why I don't do that? Could you imagine, like, I don't want to go through the stress of knowing that Dave might have pot potentially 300 some odd, 29,000 people that believe what he says. And someone with a real knowledge would say something and then those people would argue it. That eeks me more than anything. He also has like... Eight years of education? Like, he's a smart guy. Very smart. He's very well educated, studied a lot. So, automatically, oh, yeah. he's gonna get people to take his word for it yeah. over a lot of other he's people. A, he's a, is he, he's supposed to be a doctor? He was close, I think. Yeah. So, I'm gonna definitely debunk your uh, kidney degree for sure. Well, he doesn't match up with a master's in kinesiology. What was the difference? I know the difference. You do. My twin brother is a PhD in chemistry. He's like one of the smartest guys in the world. You know the difference. But he doesn't know how to lift weights properly. Jimmy, Jimmy Joe doesn't know the difference. The, 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 the average subscriber doesn't know. Here's masters of kinesiology. You probably know what the fuck David means. And someone will say, Kinesiology is the funny study of human David, movement. No one knows that, Greg. No one knows that. Go on the street and ask the first person you see, do you know what kinesiology is? They'll be like, what? No one knows. Well, if I said, so you if know I what said a dentist is, they'd be like, yeah, that's your teeth. Of course. Like, so who should you learn from more? A phys ed teacher or a dentist? I'm, so, and they would know at least phys ed an teacher. Idiot, no, what they wouldn't. An idiot would say a dentist because How of... about a dietitian? You'd be like, well, they probably know about nutrition more than what a doctor would know about nutrition. That's, that's a little more, you know, I'm a doctor would know more about what do you do if you have point, an infection. Point is, or a point is, correct, point is. You got to, you have to, you have to think and understand. People don't know the difference. And the regular mind would hear was almost a doctor. Yeah. And the other one would say he's got a master's in kinesiology. You'd be like, oh man, you were almost a doctor. Ooh, that's probably better than a master's in kinesiology. What if you're a lawyer? Say. You studied eight years and you're the best lawyer around. You're smart, but doesn't mean you know anything about nutrition. I would take the dietitian's well, that's word different. over the lawyer's word. That's different. That's a lawyer. That's something that's nothing to do lawyer with the is body. Just as smart as a doctor. The people don't know that. They people should, hear though. people hear the profession and they and they link the they link that to who, whatever, right? People, you think people yeah. literally think that doctors are experts? Yeah. Well, they do. Everything. Doctors, a lot of stuff. Though. Doctors to the average idiot know the difference between a doctor and a master's kinesiology. I don't know. Maybe yes. I'm overestimating what people would know. You're because overestimating I have, a, I have an observational bias because. I've everyone been, around you is everyone, everyone around you is everyone is but everyone around you is pretty is pretty intelligent. I'm a coach. I talk to you one on one like you do. How yeah. many how many people you coach out of the fifty some people you coach? How many how many uh, or forty seven? Out of those forty seven, how many of them will know the difference between a doctor and a master of kinesiology? It's like <laughs> I would want them to think that I would know more than them about exercise. No. Specifically. No. Not no. about, oh, I broke my that's ankle. Why what x ray do I need? Or what go, medicine do I need? Because I have hemorrhoids. The doctor told me to do this. And you're like, what? Right? They'll believe the doctor. Man, doctors need to know how to work out. They don't know how to train. They don't, that's a, they don't, How many classes do you think they have as a doctor zero. on steroids? <laughs> One. One hour. One year. One hour. 
one hour. One, one hour class on first steroids. Year, first year, one hour. So if you go up to a doctor and say, hey, teach me about Trenbolone, there's a 0% chance they know what that is. Yeah. And if you say, hey doc, tell me how to perform a bicep curl. Yeah, put this way. They might know, put but this probably way. not. Put this way, any, any normal person doesn't even know, like, how many, how many, how many of your, of your, um, of your clients who are using even know properly what your movie is. <laughs> Not many. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so they're going to remember, all you, it's your own fucking saying. All you know is 5% more than someone else. A doctor knows uh, way more than 5% of, any, of anybody. <laughs> Sad. So I finished off my day with tricep push downs for a set of 15 20 reps. Just if you know, finish my triceps, annihilate them after they got beat up with the other exercises. Um, I don't know if you got the gist of our of our conversation, but basically we were talking about how most people, I guess more so viewers, don't really understand or know the difference between different levels of education, you know, distinctions or titles or degrees or whatnot. And for the most part that's the problem when it comes to doing any kind of video that is going to bring any kind of controversy because for the most part people are going to listen to the person that has that recognizable distinction so like greg says you'll have to know five percent more than someone else and they think you know everything and when you have something like a doctor next to your name i mean everyone's going to believe everything you're going to say and that's a wrap another sweet workout I'm really happy actually with pressing today brought me back yeah you know, i love doing this you know my workouts now are a lot more they're efficient but they're a lot more efficient in exercise selection so for me like you know not being in the gym having all those variety it's very important to find the exercise that is the best one for you to get the best you know workout you know most optimal workout and muscle stimulation so for me pressing incline 15 degree then i go 30 degree those are my two presses then i'll do a close grip press at an incline back to 15 degree and then I'll start flies and I'll do flies until those cows come home so um, and then I'll go into a tricep exercise only about one or two and then you know at the end of the week I'll do a full arm day um, I got a couple of those out that I'll start loading up but anyway so that's it today guys you come help me out you sure you come you come help me out is that your Lego car you want to say bye to everybody? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Also hit the notification button. The notification button. And check out these videos. Until next time, guys. Thank you for stopping by and keep dream chasing. Say peace. Peace. <laughs>